China spends more on domestic security than it spends on its own military. At the beginning of Xi Jinping's rule from 2012 to 2017, China's domestic security budget doubled. But in the Xinjiang province, the security budget tripled. Xinjiang has emerged as the most Orwellian police state on earth, with cameras and checkpoints tracking every person and monitoring every behavior that trigger, triggers even the slightest semblance of suspicion. The mass surveillance of Uyghurs reflects the pathological paranoia of a regime that lives in existential fear of its own people, that fears the loss of its own power, and that seeks survival and self-preservation by any means necessary, including genocide. At the heart of genocide is the intent to destroy a people. There is clear and convincing evidence that the CCP has the intent to destroy the culture of Uyghurs, to destroy the identity, the history, and the very fertility of Uyghurs as a people. As a result of forced sterilizations, abortions, and IUD insertions from 2017 to 2019, the birth rates in Xinjiang collapsed by 50%, the steepest decline in birth rates in recent history. Not even the genocide in Rwanda or Cambodia or Bosnia produced a comparable collapse in fertility. There are those who do dispute or are hesitant to use the word genocide, but Ms. Kukuler, is it fair to say that the unprecedented collapse in birth rates among Uyghurs combined with the cultural erasure of Uyghurs through systematic re-education constitutes compelling evidence of genocide? I think the situation uh, that you just presented is one that is so incredibly alarming that every single person has to take notice and we need to uphold our obligation to prevent genocide. The sad reality is that we're looking at a situation where crimes are already occurring and we should have been responding much earlier to the warning signs and the risk factors of that. And I think it's really important to underscore, and there's been much discussion about the why, Perpetrators have many motivations for why they commit crimes and why they escalate their crimes, including up to genocide. And we need to understand their motivations so that we can develop policies that actually are more strategic and targeted to try to change that behavior. The desire for stability is motivated, yes, by concern about identity, uh, perceptions of religious extremism, terrorism, splitism, the three evils that the Chinese government advances. But the reality is there's also an economic motivation. The Belt and Road Initiative, which is critical to Xinjiang, has got three major intersections that cross through that territory. So the commission of these crimes has many different uh, causes, which we have to put more of an emphasis on. Well, there is no Belt and Road without Xinjiang. Exactly. Right. And it also has an abundance of minerals, the highest energy reserves. It has tr immense strategic importance to the CCP. You know, as we reflect on the genocide against Uyghurs, I'm reminded of the following quote from Justice Robert Jackson in his opening statement at the Nuremberg trials. The wrongs which we seek to condemn and punish have been so calculated, so malignant, and so devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored because it cannot survive their being repeated. And yet, despite this warning, I worry that the international community has lost its sense of shock and horror at the very mention of genocide. And if you are going to invoke the term genocide, as the United States has done, the word genocide, which commands moral weight, must carry with it an obligation to galvanize the world into action. And if you're wondering whether the United States has done enough diplomatically to stop the Uyghur genocide, Look no further than the United Nations Human Rights Council, which voted against even debating, let alone denouncing, the human rights violations in Xinjiang. Even Ukraine voted to abstain. Every Muslim country except Somalia voted no. And so, Mr. Turkle, do you believe, as I do, that the United States, as the leader of the free world, must commit ourselves to building a multilateral coalition aimed at stopping the Uyghur genocide. Absolutely. You know, to your earlier point, uh, words matter. Uh, there is a reason to call this genocide. Once we call it, the next step under the, under the Article 1 of the Genocide Conventions is to stop it. And then hold those perpetrators to, the account, to account. More than 150 countries around the world are state party to the Genocide Convention. Only 10, including some parliaments, yeah. our government, give a proper name to this crime. It's a genocide. It's crime against humanity. It is past time for action. Again, as I said, this has been ongoing genocide in the last six, seven years. And my time's about to expire, but as we reflect on Ramadan, there is no government on earth that has done more 
to demonize the Muslim faithful and to desecrate the Muslim faith than the Chinese Communist Party.